Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to go to the Player's Handbook, and we're going to take a look at the third level cleric spell, Remove Curse. This is a surprisingly necessary spell in AD&D. Uh, as I said, it's a third level, it's an abjuration, and it is reversible. Range is touch, duration is permanent, area of effect is special, verbal and somatic components, six segment casting time, and the saving throw is special. Upon casting the spell, the cleric is usually able to remove a curse, whether it be on an object, a person, or in the form of some undesired sending or evil presence. Note that the remove curse will not affect a curse shield, weapon, or suit of armor, for example, although the spell that typically enabled the person afflicted with any the spell will typically enable a person who has been afflicted with such thing to be rid of it. The reverse of the spell is not permanent. The bestow curse lasts for one turn for every level of experience of the cleric using the spell. It will lower one ability of the victim to three. Your DM will determine which by random selection. That's big. 50% of the time. Reduce the victims to hit and saving throw probabilities by minus four each 50% of the time. Or make the vi victim 50% likely per turn to drop whatever he, she, or it is holding. Or simply do nothing in the case of creatures not using tools 25% of the time. It's possible for a cleric to devise his or own, her own curse, and it should be similar in power to those shown. Consult your referee. The target of a bestow curse spell must be touched. If the victim is touched, a saving throw is still applicable. If it's successful, the spell is negated. Interesting. So we'll talk about the remove part of it right now. Uh, there are many, many cursed magic items in the... Uh, Dungeon Master's Guide that require remove curse to get rid of it. Uh, some swords that are typically minus one attack, minus one damage. They leap to hand whenever you're in battle. You need to remove curse to get rid of it. There's cursed plate mail that lowers your or raises your armor class, makes you easier to hit. Typically, you need a remove curse to get rid of these things. Whenever I play a cleric, I have a remove curse on hand. They, as a third level spell, you gain the ability to cast it at fifth level. Remove Curse is an incredible utilitarian spell. Uh, there are some things in the Monster Manual that, that require move, Remove Curses. The one I'm going to address is Lycanthropy. Now, I've talked about Cure Disease and Lycanthropy before, but one thing that I've changed in my game a little bit, not always, uh, but I'll, I let my players know beforehand when there's Lycanthropes around, is sometimes the players not only need a Cure Disease, but they also need to Remove Curse to get rid of the affliction of lycanthropy. It's just something that I feel is there. Lycanthropy is more of a curse than anything else, in my opinion. And the Monster Manual was written in 1977. So I've gone ahead and I've adjusted it a little bit. Now, sometimes I'll make it clear this is a lesser lycanthrop uh, or something like that, and a cure disease will take care of it. Usually were rats, I just let it be a cure disease. But if it's any kind of uh, werewolf or anything like that, I'll almost always require a remove curse in addition to the cure disease. Just my table rule. That's uh, I might have read something to that effect in second edition. I haven't been able to find it in my research for this. So if you know where I might have read that, let me know. But I know that's a rule I've used for many, many years on lycanthropy. As far as bestowing a curse, I like the curse that's given here. Take one random ability, reduce it to three. If that's your dexterity or your constitution or your strength, you're in a lot of trouble quick or your intelligence. You're in a lot of trouble in a hurry. Uh, the character is virtually done, and the minimum effect for this is going to be five turns, 50 minutes, because uh, you have to be fifth level to cast the spell. Interestingly, uh, I haven't found anything that says a remove curse must be cast by such and such level caster in order to get rid of a curse on an item or something like that. The other part that it talks about here is we'll not remove the curse of a shield, weapon, suit of armor, etc. It means that the item is still cursed. It's still going to affect whoever claims it next. Uh, you're simply suspending the effect to allow you to get rid of it. So in the case of the sword that always leaps to hand whenever you're in battle, if you've got to remove curse, you can dump the sword and then just don't touch it again and you're fine. But the next person that picks it up is going to have the curse put on them. The only way to completely render it uh, gone is to destroy the sword. So that's the remove curse aspect of it. And I've touched a little bit on the bestowing curse. 
So basically, I need to touch somebody with this, and uh, they get a saving throw. But this is a heavy level curse. For one turn per level, you have a stat reduced to three 50% of the time. You can reduce your victims to hit and saving throws by minus four 25% of the time, or make them 50% likely to drop something 25% of the time. So every time they pick up their sword, if you get that result, there's a 50-50 chance they'll just drop it. Their, their shield, they'll just drop it. I, I would even say their gauntlets and gloves. Not so much gloves, but gauntlets may come off their hands. So it's an interesting curse. It also says you're uh, allowed to come up with your own curses. One good curse I saw used at my table by a player. Uh, he was a neutral uh, cleric of a neutral deity. And he had an NPC who was just going to go into a gambling tournament. They were going to be throwing dice. So he shook the guy's hand. Good luck, he says. What he's really doing is uh, bestowing a curse. And the curse was for one turn per level. I think he was six turn, six levels, so it was six turns. For one turn per level, this guy would have nothing but ill luck at the table. I allowed that to go forward just as he had said it. I didn't get any percentages or anything. I just thought that was a pretty clever curse and a pretty clever way to inflict the curse. So I let it stand as he did it. Um, that was some good role playing. That game had uh, that particular episode game saw very little combat, a lot to do with this little uh, poker tournament they were in. I did this game about ten years ago, a little poker tournament that they were in, and uh, the the gambling aspects of it. And I actually had a couple of actual poker games that the players were involved with. Uh, I'm going to talk about poker in D and D sometime down the line. But uh, that was a good curse, I thought, because here this guy goes in, and for the first hour, he can do absolutely nothing right. Fails his saving throw, gets to the gaming table, and gets absolutely destroyed. And as anyone who's gambled knows, if you are not doing anything, you're pretty much done in the first hour. So this guy was, my cleric got a good yuck-yuck out of it, and that was that. So that's a, a type of curse I would allow to bestow. And again, they only last one turn per level. So if a player wanted to come up with a curse where they... Uh, a person's charisma was dropped to three uh, for the, the duration of the curse. I would probably allow something like that, where they would just be, you know, this completely non-charismatic creature people would walk away from. The other thing about a remove curse is if you don't have one in your group, you have to pay for one. On pages 103 and 104 of the Dungeon Master's Guide, we find how much it costs to pay Non-player characters to cast spells. Going to page 104, we find Remove Curse. Remove Curse is right there. 500 gold pieces per level of the spellcaster. So 500 per level of the caster. So if it's a 6-level caster, that's uh, 3,000 gold pieces to go ahead and get that spell removed. That's pretty darned expensive. So, better hang out with a cleric, or better yet, be one yourself and take the spell. Otherwise, it can cost you. I had a player years ago. It was a, uh, a ranger. Uh, I didn't stay long in the campaign. Uh, it was run by a friend of mine, but he kind of dissolved the campaign. But early in the campaign, my uh, ranger had picked up a cursed ring. It made him plus or minus two attack, minus two damage on everything he did. And I have to admit, it was rough to roleplay that. I ended up having that ring. We were only second level when I got it. I ended up having that ring for quite a amount of time with the character through a couple of game sessions and trying to save up enough money to find a cleric who would do a remove curse on it. I eventually did and got the ring removed. And being a good ranger, uh, I took it to a deep lake and dropped it in so no one else would ever be cursed by this particular ring. But it was tough role playing, I have to say. I. I didn't particularly enjoy having to play a guy who was so bad in combat, especially because I had played the ranger because I wanted to kind of kick a little butt in combat. Uh, it was tough to play it. That uh, group dissolved not terribly long after I got rid of the ring, and I, it lost the character lost all flavor for me. I never ended up playing him again. But that happens sometimes. Some characters just uh, have bad luck at the start or early in their career, and they just leave a bad taste in your mouth, and that happens. The DM didn't mean to do anything. It's just how it kind of worked out. So there you have it. There's a quick look at Remove Curse as we're coming closer and closer to Halloween. I thought this was an appropriate uh, spell. 
So let me know what you think, how you've seen Remove Curse used or needed in your campaign, or maybe some curses you yourselves have come up with. Please leave me any comments below. That's all I've got to say today for page 121. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.